Hello Max Tubers, welcome back to my channel. What's up with you guys? I hope everyone is happy and healthy. As you all know, we are currently placed under GCQ or General Community Quarantine, meaning the rules are a bit more relaxed, but I still urge everyone to stay at home if you have the choice to do so. As there is still no vaccine or known cure for COVID-19, please make sure to wear your face masks. Frequent hand washing is still advisable. Of course, continue to observe social distancing and avoid touching your face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Okay, so after that quick reminder, I am very happy to announce that we will be watching a video of Ms. Morissette Ammon together with Mr. John Joven performing a medley from the musical Miss Saigon. As a huge fan of Broadway songs, I'm so excited to watch this. But before we start, you guys know the drill. Please follow me on Instagram at Max underscore two and if you are here for the very first time please don't forget to hit subscribe the notification bell watch and comment on my videos here in max tube okay miss saigon let's talk about the songs miss saigon songs generally are not as classical sounding as the songs from the Phantom of the Opera as they require a lot of belting for the female leads. So I think this would be perfect for Morissette in terms of style. As for John Joven, the name doesn't ring a bell so most probably I haven't worked with him yet. But anyways, let's start the video because I'm really excited. I can't wait. As usual, for the uninterrupted video, if you do not like pauses in between, please head to the channel of Ron Sky Beat. The link is in my description box. I'm super excited. This song is entitled Sun and Moon, and I sing this a lot in my events. So I super love this song. As expected, this song suits her very, very well. Her voice is very clean, very pure. We are hearing the same clarity she gave us when she did the song All I Ask of You recently in one of her live sessions. A lot of people may say that Morissette sounds a lot like Mariah Carey, and you all know, I am a huge Mariah fan. But I think Morissette has a leg up on Mariah in terms of this clarity, for lack of better term. But let me explain this further before I get misunderstood by my fellow Mariah fans. Due to her nodules, Mariah has a naturally raspy voice which she knows how to use to make it sound phenomenal making her the worldwide legend and icon that she is and that's why we love her and respect her in Morissette's case although she does sometimes apply rasps in her delivery it is more of a style that uh, she uses to add color to her performances. It is not naturally built in in her voice. It is not an innate quality of her voice. But because of this, she is able to give us 
this pure and crystal clear tone suitable for Broadway songs like this. Let's continue. Listening to his voice, we can tell that he is a tenor. So this song should be easy for him. If I can sing it as a baritone, then he can definitely do it way better. Side note, I don't know why he looks so familiar to me, but the name doesn't ring a bell. Have I worked with him before? Not sure. Perfect so far. Their individual voices complement each other's really, really well. And needless to say, both of them have uh, beautiful, exquisite voices. Moving on. Your moon. Sorry for the audio distortion in the video. If you turn the volume down a bit, uh, you won't notice it that much. Anyways, the most awaited climax of the song is coming up. Yes! As you have just heard, it was flawless, right? Both of their voices are perfect for this song. That's what I like about Morissette's uh, flexibility. She is one of those singers that you cannot put in a box and say that this is the only sound that she can give us or that she can produce. She knows how to adjust her voice accordingly. She sounds different singing this song. She sounded a bit different singing All I Ask of You. And she definitely sounds different when she is belting out one of her coma-worthy pop songs. By that, I mean you can end up in a coma if you attempt singing her songs. As for John, this is um, my first time to listen to him, so I have no idea what his real genre is, but all I can say is he sounds splendid. His voice quality is made for this kind of songs. Oh, wait. So they did not sing the last verse of Sun and Moon, and they are going directly to the next song. Uh, and just by listening to the intro, I know that this is Last Night of the World, which is another one of my personal favorites. So, here we go. In a place that won't let us feel In a life when nothing seems real I have found you Tonight, I have found you He uttered a word that is not part of the original song. The word tonight. So that is an ad lib. He actually has a superb voice, and I can tell that he is really, really comfortable with this genre. Maybe he is a stage actor. I'll try to look him up. Wait. 
Yes, he is a stage actor. Based on the internet, he is called the Prince of Broadway. He has appeared in Miss Saigon in Germany and the U.S. productions of My Fair Lady, South Pacific, so on and so forth. So that explains it. It's really his genre. No wonder he sounds so good and comfortable. Anyway, let's continue. They are actually doing the blocking of the stage play when Chris and Kim were singing this part of the song. Isn't it amazing? If only they were in costume, this would even be more perfect. But I'm sure this is not the only production number they're doing for the show, so I'm sure it wouldn't be feasible for them to be in full Miss Saigon gear. That said, I would just have to be satisfied with their wonderful voices and how good they look together. Let's continue. A quick constructive criticism. I would like it better if she enunciated the words drown the distant drums with more clarity. Actually, what she did was she stylized that verse. It was supposed to go like, Tonight our hearts drown the distant drums. Instead she did, Tonight our hearts drown the distant drums. That's why um, the word drown was a bit compromised. <sighs> Beautiful rendition from John. Just need to put that out there. And being a tenor, he sounds even better as he goes up his upper range. Let's go back to the clip. Okay, we are not trying to compare them to each other, but the reality is this song, Last Night of the World, if you ask me, highlights the voice of the male singer more than the females. That is just how the song is written. Nonetheless, I still love Morissette's tone. If you folks notice, there are so many parts in the song that are quite mellow. And most of the belt parts we have heard so far are from Chris, the male character. The character of Kim has a few belt parts, uh, which we will hear in the latter part of the song. On the other side of the earth there's a place where life still has to work. I will take you and talk with you. Again, they both did something different in uh, their respective parts. John uh, changing that one note in life still has worth. And Morissette uh, going one octave higher in uh, I'll Go With You. Uh, the original one being one octave lower. But I can give them a pass. Since this is a concert type show, not the actual stage play, where we are so strict with the delivery. Besides, they sounded good, so no harm done. Maybe except in the eyes of uh, the Broadway purists out there.
I forgot to say this. The role of Chris is a tenor, which I'm sure John is, just listening to him. But Kim is a mezzo-soprano role. And we shouldn't forget that Morissette is a lyric soprano, I think. Yeah. But definitely, she is not a mezzo-soprano. So in effect, she is singing a song that is not made for her voice quality, for her voice type. But I think she's doing great. She is successfully giving us the vocal weight needed for the song. Let's move on. Also, this is the interaction that I am always looking for in a duet. This is related to one of the comments I made in the Judge Vincent and uh, Morissette Run To You duet video, if you guys remember. I said that they needed to have more interaction, uh, that they needed to engage with one another more on stage in that performance. Sorry to pause the video again. You know, but in hindsight, I really think the guy should always be the one to initiate the interaction on stage. Because if the lady initiates it, it wouldn't look right. And that's what John has been doing in this performance. Well, he is a seasoned stage actor after all, so he knows what he should and should not do. By the way, up next is my favorite part of the song, and I'm sure they're going to slay it. That's my favorite part of the song. And like I said, I never had a doubt. I would be surprised if they didn't kill it. Although if John was able to hold that note just a bit longer, like what Morissette did, it would even be better. Yes. Bravo. Very, very nice. Thank you. What an absolute honor. That was a beautiful ending. Both of them sustained that last note perfectly with just the right amount of intensity. In my opinion, there is nothing, nothing about this video not to like. Both of them gave us stellar performances, and I am as impressed by John as I am by Morissette. But if I am to give them a score, I would give them a 99.5%. The 0.5% representing the minor constructive criticisms I gave earlier. So what do you guys think about this production number? If you like it, please give this video a thumbs up and share with me down below your thoughts about this Miss Saigon medley. On that note, thank you all for watching and please don't forget to hit subscribe, the notification bell, watch and comment on my videos here in Max. Few. Stay happy and healthy everyone. See you again soon.